I've often stood right here demonstrating on my small Delta MIDI lathe well I sold it and I'm going to buy another lathe so I'm going to call this video selecting a lathe so let me show you my thought process as I go through this I've got two lathes right now I've always had three and let me show you what I really need so as I make the decision to buy another lathe, what do I do? What do I get? What features do I need, considering I've already got two lathes sitting here? Well, you're looking at my Powermatic, and this is a project I've been working on. This Powermatic has a 20-inch swing, so I can turn a 20-inch bowl or a 20-inch platter. I very seldom use this lathe for long spindles. I'm not going to turn a cane on this. I bring the headstock up to right here in the front part of my lathe and I do a lot of hollowing without the tailstock. The tailstock is very heavy so I depend on my delta that I'll show you in just a second for that kind of work where I need tailstock support. So this is my lathe, 20 inch swing, very powerful. I can do some heavy hollowing with this lathe, so that fits a niche that I need in my shop. So now you're looking at my old workhorse, my Delta steel bed lathe. I've had this lathe for 20 years, and it's a good old lathe that's very powerful. I've got this weighted down with a lot of sand in a box down here below the bedways. And it serves a purpose in my shop. The swing is 16 inches. So if I need something bigger than that, I go to my Powermatic. But for the most part, I'm not turning a lot of big stuff like I used to anyway. So here's the process. I may start a bowl, a rough turn of bowl. And I may have it in this orientation and establish the tenon where I need tailstock support, then I take it over to my Powermatic and reverse it and do the inside. And if I'm doing a whole bunch of bowls, five or 10 or 15 wet turn bowls, this is a great process. And it's nice if you're making money to have a couple lathes for this. So this lathe serves a purpose. And right now you can see that I've got my grinding stone in this. And sometimes I'll just put that in there, and it was in there because I was sharpening some tools that I didn't want to put on my CBN wheels. I was doing some heavy grinding, so this is kind of nice. Uh, I may leave this up here until I need this lathe, and I'll take it off. So here's another lathe that fits a certain purpose in my shop. It's got a long uh, expansion here. I can turn... Uh, I think about a 38 or 39 inch spindle, like a big cane or something if I'm doing that sort of thing, which I don't do very often, but it's nice. I usually leave the tail stock up on this lathe uh, just for that purpose and I move it way out of the way. It's not real heavy. The Powermatic, again, I don't hardly ever use the tail stock on that. So now that's part of my decision making process in getting a new lathe. What I had before was a Delta MIDI, 12 inch swing, probably uh, went to 24 inches or 22 inches for, the, for a spindle. That's what I'm looking for. I don't need another 16 inch swing on this one. I don't need another 20 inch swing like on a big Powermatic. So I'm looking at either a Vicmark or a one-way 1224. They've got a 12 inch swing. And they're both very expensive. You can look up the price on your own. Well, the Vicmark, the delivery date on that is between two and four months. That's a consideration. When you're getting a big machine or even a, you know, a, a mid-sized machine, sometimes they'll drop ship that. It'll come directly from the factory. One way uh, is located in Ontario. And Vicmark is in Australia or New Zealand. It's a long way away anyway. So that's what I'm looking for. And I'm not sure which one I'm going to get at this point. I really like the one way. It's got some really great features on it. And if I get the one way or the Vicmark, 
when I get those, I'll do a review on that new lathe and I'll unbox it and it'll be pretty cool. But now I'm without a lathe. What do I do? Well, I didn't mean for this short video to be a comprehensive perspective on lathes. They have lots of different features and you just have to decide for yourself what you want. Um, I wouldn't have a lathe that didn't have a variable speed. I wouldn't have a lathe that didn't go in reverse. These are very important features. And if you want a less expensive lathe, they won't have those features. They may be three, four hundred dollars, but you get what you get and you get what you pay for. I need those features on my lathe. This one, for example, in my Powermatic, as well as the other two I'm looking at, have belts that you need to change, which isn't a big deal, but that puts you in a different range. Now this Delta and my Powermatic have two or three belts. My Powermatic has two uh, speed ranges. This Delta has three belts. So you can put it on a low belt for high torque. Uh, you can put it on the other belt for more speed. Now both the Vicmark and the One Way smaller lathes have that feature, which is really a good thing. You can kind of uh, focus in on the type of thing you're doing. If you're turning a pen, you want to turn maybe three or 4,000 RPM. If you're turning something that's uh, going to bog down the motor, you want higher torque, so you put it on that belt. So those are a couple of things you want to look for in a lathe. Well, um, I could get by with Jet makes a very nice lathe the Delta MIDI that I just had, well, I want to upgrade. I want to get something better. So that's why I'm looking at the Vicmark or the One Way. Well, it may be a while before I get one or even make a decision. So thank you and just give me a comment if you have more specific questions on selecting a lathe. Now, if you own either the Vicmark or the One Way lathe, I'd love to hear your comments. Tell me the pros and cons of either one of these machines, thanks. Now I've mentioned reverse and variable speed options on a lathe. Another option that is very important uh, to consider is the spindle size. I really feel that you shouldn't get anything less than a one inch spindle size. If you do, you're gonna have trouble getting accessories to put on that machine. Well, you're looking at another lathe that I have in my shop right now. This is actually a lathe that belongs to one of our club members who brought this over for our club meetings and it's a jet. I've had two jets previously. They're good lathes. This one is pretty basic. No variable speed. You change belts when you want to change the speed but once you change that belt it stays on that speed. You can't increase or decrease the speed. Doesn't do reverse. Pretty basic lathe. I don't know what this costs, but if money is a consideration, and it always is for all of us, um, this might be a good place for you to start. It's not a bad lathe. In my original upload of this video, I made some comments about inexpensive lathes that I regret saying. I have no experience with these lathes. I was out of line making that statement, and I apologize if I offended anyone. I have simply removed that part of the video.